Every day I make sure that I have at least one gallon of juice. When I can't have it fresh made in my travels, which are frequent like yesterday, I make sure that that I take some form of equivalency in powders and then add water, spring water, or filtered water, and I that's how I get my energy. I'm getting my nutrients. Now, when I'm suggesting that the easiest vegetable for people to juice is celery, it's for a lot of reasons. Celery does a lot of good things. First, it's a good source of vitamin K, of folate, which converts into folic acid, of vitamin A and potassium, and we need potassium for regular heartbeat and maintaining a balance between the sodium we take in, mainly a salt, which we almost always take too much, And when we have too much salt or sodium, we become bloated. Our our legs swell, our face swells, our arms can swell, and that creates local inflammation, and that can lead to pain. So potassium is very important. Vitamin C, molybdenum, but it also contains something unique, which is the primary reason that I have my celery juice every day. And I have it with cucumber, including using the skin, but mine is always organic and very thoroughly washed. In fact, I I triple wash everything, uh, and it's very easy to do. First, you get a veggie spray. If you don't have a veggie spray, you can use hydrogen peroxide in a, let's say, a, a bowl, and you put whatever you're going to wash, your berries or vegetables in there, and you spray it, and then you agitate it. That's one. Then you take out the bowl, and then you fill the bowl repeatedly with water, and you agitate it as clean water is rushing in, allowing any debris, any microorganisms, any of the E. coli or the uh, the disease-causing microorganisms that still could be there in small amounts to be washed away. And then I just put it under the faucet and rinse it a third time. It doesn't take long. I can do all that in a minute or two. Last year... Americans had more than 70 million cases of food poisoning. A lot of that was when they bought something and did not wash it, did not wash their hands before they ate something, not realizing everything they had touched, money, doorknobs that had multiple microorganisms on it, then touched their food. So simply washing your hands before you eat, washing your food unless it's cooked, is simply good hygiene. It's not fanatical. It's not obsessive. It's just being prudent because once you get that food poisoning, some of those parasites can stay in you for a long time. Now, here are the, here's the unique compound. It's called 3-N-butyl-phytolide. And it is very important. Why? Because it's outstanding for helping your brain. Now, you never thought of celery as brain food. Normally and historically, hygienists have said celery juice is good for blood cleaning. And it is. It's good for thinning the blood because it's got natural um, vitamin K in there and it also has chlorophyll, which is a natural blood thinner, does what aspirin does, and therefore lessening the likelihood of a stroke, that it does. But it's really this special compound It's been shown to enhance cognitive function. It uh, has been used to benefit in one study, research study, Alzheimer's disease. So when, and it also benefits safeguarding you against cardiovascular disease, cancer, and diabetes. You see, celery belongs to a family and is derived from wild celery that contains more leaves and less stalk. Now, celery is believed to have originated in the Mediterranean, and it's also indigenous to India, Nepal, and China. And it was first recognized as being medicinal, meaning a functional food, in the 9th century. And then it went into the Middle Ages, and it didn't come back again when it disappeared until the 1800s in Europe. We know that it's rich in what are called flavonoids. Now, you've heard me mention many times that flavonoids, the more you have, And you get those like eating apples, blueberries, pomegranate, raspberries, cherries, onions. Remember, an onion a day, raw, can keep a stroke away. 
It also kills a lot of the bacteria in your throat that can lead to sore throat and viruses as well. But these flavonoids are an integral component of every cancer preventative strategy. Now, there are two flavonoids in particular that you're going to find in celery. One is called apigenin, A-P-I, apigenin, G-E-N-I-N. And the other is called lutein, lut, L-U-T-E, olin, O-L-I-N, lutein and apigen. Now, they can protect against various types of cancer. In one study reported in the International Journal of Cancer, they compared the intake of five flavonoids in women with and without ovarian cancer. And after adjusting for tubal ligation, meaning tides, tubes tied, and physical activity and duration of oral contraceptive use, they found that only apigenin to be associated with reduced ovarian cancer risk with the highest intake, meaning the more celery you ate, was 21% reduction. Well, what if you juice the celery? When you juice the celery, you're getting about five times more value than if you ate it. That doesn't mean you shouldn't eat celery. But the nutrients are so tied up in the really stringy, if you've ever seen celery, lots of little legocellular strings, that's where the nutrients are. By juicing it, you're liberating it. And if you can't juice it, blend it in a good blender. That liberates it. Just be careful not to do too much of your vegetables in a blender because you can actually get too much fiber and it goes too quickly through the intestine and you don't get the right absorption level. So now we know that we know that apigenin works by decreasing the expression of vascular and endothelial growth factor, a protein that stimulates the formation of new blood vessels that are vital for tumors to grow. And pancreatic cancer is frequently diagnosed at more advanced stages in patients, making it difficult to treat. Well, there's a lot of data that suggests apigenin can combat pancreatic cancer through multiple mechanisms, including impairing glucose uptake and triggering programmed cell death and disrupting the cancer cell cycle. And the lutein, another celery flavonoid, has potent anti-cancer activity, particularly colon cancer. And colon cancer cells secrete insulin-like growth factor, too, which plays a major role in signaling uncontrolled cell growth and replication. And in a study in the peer-reviewed journal, the British Medical um, uh, Cancer Gastroenterology, researchers observed that lutein suppressed the secretion of IGF, which, again, is the, the insulin-like growth factor that you want to suppress, and that halted the progression of colon cancer. Well, take them both, because you're getting them both when you have celery. In fact, some Italian research scientists discovered that the highest intake of both flavonoids reduced the risk of breast cancer by 19%. Now, mind you, we're talking about 19% reduction in breast cancer by eating celery. Well, what if you had two 16-ounce glasses of celery juice with apple? That's anti-cancer, and that's got flavonoids. Cucumber. That's got anti-cancer elements, especially in the skin. That's why you want to keep the skin. That's why it has to be organic. And lemon, including the whole lemon, because you have limonene in the skin of the lemon, which is very strongly anti-cancer. That means that I believe you could almost prevent breast cancer 80 to 90% with just those two juices alone. Now, back in the 1930s and 40s in Germany... There was a 20s, 30s, and 40s in Germany, beginning of the 40s, until we had to leave. Dr. Max Gerson found a cure for tuberculosis, uh, and he was using live juices. Later in the United States, he was able to take over 50 patients who had terminal cancer, and by doing extensive juicing, about 13 to 15 glasses of fresh juice a day, adding in additional potassium, keeping them on a low-sodium diet, getting rid of the meat in their diet and processed foods and and smoked foods, salmon, smoked salmon, bacon, salami, bologna, got rid of all those processed foods and got rid of the processed sugars. He had 50-plus remissions. So impressive were these remissions that a senator invited Gerson to Washington and his patients, and he made a presentation and proved his case, and he was given a special 
acknowledgement. I actually have to this day the uh, record of his testimony and his acknowledgement. Later, the American Medical Association and the zealotry of a real sociopath who worked there ran it, a man named Fishbein, was to denigrate both Hoxie, the first authentic, legitimate cancer treatment in the United States, and then uh, Gerson, and then Ivy and Krabiasin. So anything that worked, they destroyed. But it worked. And what was the basis? Celery juice, celery apple. He also used carrot. I wouldn't use carrot. There are a lot of other ways of getting the beta carotenes and vitamin A into the system because it's very also easy to get jaundice, meaning you get too much made in the body and your hands turn orange, your face turns orange. But set, set aside the vitamin, uh, too much sugar also from the carrots. Everything else in that juicing was really good. So one more reason. Now, you also have cardioprotective effects. The heart-promoting properties of celery are related to its ability to to reduce the development of major risk factors that contribute to heart disease. There was a study done at at Yeovil University Hospital in Norway that showed that the higher the rich vitamin C food, such as celery, led to a less thickening of the carotid artery, thereby ensuring optimal blood flow and preventing atherosclerosis and subsequently heart disease. In another study in the peer-reviewed journal Pharmacology Magazine, scientists found that rats supplemented with celery seed extract daily for 60 days significantly reduced triglyceride levels by 22% in the LDL cholesterol uh, by 27%, and that's good. So you've got a lot of good nutrients in celery. It can help prevent diabetes also. Celery also helps you relieve gout. Now, gout is a form of arthritis. We have elevated uric acid levels, which causes the formation of crystals in your joints, and that produces inflammation and pain. Well, celery can help treat gout by modulating uric acid levels. And this isn't even new. This has been around for a long time, that celery juice and eating celery helps with gout. Now, recently, some Egyptian researchers tested the effects of different plant extracts, including celery seed on uric acid levels, and with gout and found the end result that celery seed extracts ex- experience a 56% reduction in uric acid levels, the highest of all plant extracts. So that's our nutrient of the day, and that's why I said I want to go a little longer into that subject. Now I'm going to give a little extra time today also to our DNA. Virtually all the research I have done is based on how to slow down the DNA from aging, in other words, lengthening its telomeres, uh, extending the biological clock. And you have to do it not just for the body as a whole, but system by system, because you have different biological clocks. And that's why someone will say, well, gee whiz, they had a good heart. Why did they die? They, they, they had a bad heart, but they had a good liver. Each one uh, accepts assault and degradation differently. And as each second goes by, your DNA is being attacked by internal and environmental factors that can result in potentially lethal mutations. Now, according to Alex Richter's latest research, and I've explained this many times in this program, the average cell in your body, and you have anywhere from, oh, 50 to 100 trillion cells, they will be attacked about 10,000 times per day each and every cell. And unless you're really vigorous, unless you're really trying to protect your DNA and taking in all your antioxidant-rich foods and juices and supplements, then in time it is inevitable that from your coffee and your dairy and your meat and your fried foods, you're going to damage more DNA than you're able to protect. And you're going to see this as aging. And with that comes disease. This accumulated DNA damage underlies most of the conditions that kill us, from Alzheimer's to heart disease to cancer. Now, fortunately, there are steps that you can take in a very proactive and positive way to protect your DNA from this round-the-clock damage. We've seen time and again that there's a special group of plant compounds known as xanthophiles that have shown to be protective against DNA damage. 
Now, these molecules have been researched for their ability to prevent DNA damage and reduce disease risk. And these have been shown not only to prevent deadly genomic damage, but they simultaneously boost your body's natural DNA repair mechanisms, which help recover. Needless to say, when you are mindless or an, un, unaware of the consequences of what you're eating or drinking, you didn't know, for example, that a, a cola was bad. No one ever told you. You didn't do your research. Well, it is bad. It upsets your pH. It makes you highly acidic. It disrupts that normal, normal digestion. It can, it can take out calcium and zinc and B12 uh, from your body because caffeine itself is highly diuretic. And then the phos- phosphorus in the soft drinks are very corrosive, and they can cause havoc on your esophagus, your stomach, and your intestine, all of which is bad. So once you are younger and you're doing the right thing, you have more time to have your DNA work on your behalf. But for most people, most of the time, their DNA is being attacked. Oxygen radicals, what I've discussed many times on this program, called oxidation. That's a major way that we hurt ourselves. Then we bring in toxins, then we get too much sunlight, and all this stuff causes DNA strands to break. So even without knowing it, without feeling it, you experience millions upon millions of such DNA accidents every day. Fortunately, your body has no fewer than five interrelated mechanisms for repairing that damage. Those mechanisms are so efficient and accurate that your cells and tissues remain stable and disease-free year after year. And periodically, even the most efficient and accurate repair system makes some errors. And those errors add up. We now recognize the ability of to identify and repair DNA damage in the leading, is the leading discriminator of who does and does not get cancer and probably many other diseases. We know, for example, that when you have the carotenoid family, that would be bananas and pears and apples and radishes and celery and kohlrabi and tomatoes. You're reducing the risk of ovarian cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, invasive breast cancer, lung cancer, and estrogen receptor negative breast cancer, which is highly uh, re- resistant to treatment. So when you have your yellow, your orange, and your deep green leafy vegetables, time after time, the peer review epidemiological studies show that people who consume those, the most fruits and vegetables or their powders, have the lowest rates of cancer and other DNA damage related diseases. So my suggestion is 11 to 12 servings a day minimal, and you'll have more of these working in your system protecting your DNA.